The thumbnail of this video says, stop watching people get jacked and take action. Now you might be asking, cause you can't see me or you might be seeing me for the first time and you can't see my face. Who am I? Well, I'm jacked, I'm strong, and I'm lean most of the time. I also have encountered these exact three issues. There's an easy flow chart that I go through mentally where I work through these issues and I get to the end result, getting jacked. Like Toguro from Yu Yu Hakusho for those that enjoy anime. Guys, let me know down below, by the way, which character do you want me to draw next? This one was really fun. Three major roadblocks relating to hypertrophy, why progress isn't coming anymore, and then weight manipulation. So either gaining or losing weight. These three things alone are going to help people who are new to the gym, beginner level lifters, and even stronger guys that don't quite go through these things right when beginners do because they might be genetically gifted. So this will be useful for everybody to go through mentally. We're gonna start with, what is my lagging muscle? It's very easy, guys. You determine what your lagging muscle is by just looking at what you're doing or what you're not doing hard enough. So let's say in your training program, you're not doing hamstring curls and your deadlift isn't moving. That could be either for strength or hypertrophy. Well, you're not doing hamstring curls, start doing hamstring curls. Then you have to ask yourself, is this of an adequate difficulty? That's either gonna be yes or no. If it's no, apply more effort, you become jacked. All of these things lead down to you becoming jacked and stacked like Toguro. Toguro is the ultimate anime mass monster. Look at his shoulders, they look like mountains literally because how jacked he is. Now, if you're doing something, you're doing all the movement patterns and muscle groups that you should be doing in a training program, you're just simply not applying the right kind of effort to them. Ask yourself, I am doing this, but is it hard enough or often enough? Add effort and time. Did it work? Yes, good. If it's not, you go back up and then you look at yourself and you say, what am I not doing again? It's a very easy feedback loop that you can throw yourself into to very easily think through things that people overthink. Why am I regressing? This all happens with our training. We have a good stretch of training. We get stronger. We're improving in our movements until we're not. Everyone is going to encounter this. This is universally relatable to everybody. Again, it comes down to what am I not doing? We all have things in our training program that over time, when we do them, we're strong or we increase in our efforts in the gym for hypertrophy enthusiasts. And then when we remove them, suddenly we start to get weaker at everything. For me, these days, it's direct tricep work. If I remove that, I'm going to get weaker on bench press 10 times out of 10. If I remove something like Larson presses, I am going to get weaker 10 times out of 10. You take what you are not doing, you do that thing, and then you get strong. It also comes down to you are not recovering. If you have regressed in strength or performance, it is because you did not adequately recover, whether that's systemically. So like, uh, it's a big brain way of saying, you know, if you do something hard, hard, hard over and over again, even if you recover in terms of muscular fatigue, your body is still gonna need time for you to maximally output force again. You're not recovering enough. Are you eating or are you sleeping enough? If you're sleeping six hours a night and your diet is spotty, you're in a surplus some days, in a deficit others, maintenance others, you need to be more consistent with those two variables. If you're doing that, you're eating and you're sleeping enough and you're still not recovering, something key that you have to master with your training is consolidation. Are you just doing too much or going too hard too often. We all have, uh, you know, a certain number of weeks that we can push things very, very hard until we backslide. What you want is to identify that and then stop right before you backslide. Very easy programming principle that you can add to your training. But it's also sometimes an issue of not just consolidating the effort, but consolidating the amount of stuff that we do. If you're doing five different chest presses, 
it's going to stand to reason that over time you are going to start backsliding. You're going to start regressing. Consolidate that down to, okay, I'm doing what I need to do to get stronger. What are one or two movements that are going to assist this movement? And that's all you need. Consolidate. Once you consolidate and you get your non-training variables in order, you're going to get jacked and stacked again. This right here, you're not recovering, is going to be more so what most of you are going to look at versus what you're not doing. Recovery is everything. The last thing comes down to weight manipulation. You either have to be big enough to look jacked or have enough size and be lean enough to look jacked. And that's not super lean. I'm not one of those people that says, if you can't see your abs, you're fat. But we all like to have a nice shape to our bodies, right? A nice definition to our muscles. Even if that's not a fully shredded six pack, you do have to be a certain body composition to be jacked, to appear jacked. My preferred body fat percentage to live around is anywhere between 10, 14% body fat. That's because I find it easier to be naturally lean, but you can look really good at 15, 16, 70% body fat. Natural hypertrophy, if y'all have heard of him, I'll put a clip up of him on the screen. He is usually around 17, upwards of 18, 19% body fat sometimes, and he has fully defined abs because he trains them. I'm gonna leave some resources to ab training if you guys are interested in that. But manipulating your weight is very simple. It comes down to three key factors. You're either not tracking something, it's too soon to tell if you're gaining or losing weight, and you're just not moving enough. Very simple thought process to accommodate each of these things. A lot of the problems that we have, guys, they have easy solutions if you look at it this way. Say you're not tracking and you're not gaining or losing weight. Just start tracking. That looks like, look at your food labels. Measure the amount of food that you eat. Get an idea of how much calories are in different amounts of foods. Eat a consistent but not static diet. What does that mean? It means that, okay, every day you might have rice, you might have chicken, you might have vegetables. You can alternate your spices, the sauces that you use, but you're getting the key macros the same each day. After that, you just got to add consistency. You track consistently. If that is your issue, you're going to get jacked, whether that's shredding down or you're bulking. I'm always someone that says that 90% of your time should be spent bulking because you need to have muscles to be jacked. You can't just be lean or else you'll be a, like a marathon runner. You know, marathon runners are very lean, but no one would say that they're jacked. It's too soon to tell. So you've been dieting for a week or two at first whether you're bulking or cutting this is just something for you guys to think about a week or two is not going to be soon enough for you to notice either a difference visually or on the scale because your body has to take time to regulate to the fact that you're feeding it less calories or you're feeding it more just keep staying the course if you're tracking you're moving enough you're getting your activity level in so like 10,000 steps we'll get to that in a second just give it time, give it a month. If your weight hasn't moved at all in a month and you've been tracking it every week, it's very likely that you are not tracking it correctly. A lot of these things correct for themselves. So if you give it time with what you're doing, tracking and moving, you hopefully can read the step count on your phone, which is what I used to track it. You're just not tracking consistently and that's what your issue is. I'm not saying there aren't people that have faster or slower metabolisms. But guys, this, this narrative that you can eat in a calorie deficit and you will not lose weight is false. There is not a human being on earth where that applies to. Likewise, if you eat in a surplus, you're going to gain weight over time. It might be slowly, but you're going to gain or lose weight. The last thing is you're just getting in your own way. You're not moving enough. Now, there's something that I like to call the baseline. So you're doing too much or too little cardio. Have your baseline activity that you do, whether you're bulking, cutting, maintaining your weight. Human beings have two legs and two feet. We've been walking since we've been cavemen. We are designed to walk. You need to, in my opinion and in my experience for maximum health benefits, be walking anywhere between eight and 10,000 steps a day. What that looks like is anywhere between 
10,000 steps, three miles, about four and a half kilometers, depending upon what measurement system you use. I use freedom units, but I also recognize that people don't use them. So set a baseline. It doesn't have to be that full 10,000 steps, but just set it at say a mile. You're gonna add or subtract from that until your weight is starting to move in the direction that you're, you want it to move in. So if you want it to move up, you just stay at this baseline, like a mile or a, uh, one and a half kilometers. If you're not, just add half a mile or one kilometer to that and so on. Until you're getting the results that you want, you do that consistently and you're gonna start gaining or losing weight. Guys, very, very simple and relatable problems that we all encounter, whether you are a beginner, whether you are someone like me that has been training for a while, you're, or you're someone that's super elite, you have to be cognizant of these three things and be able to work through them in a way that you're not overthinking things. Let me know if y'all have any questions down below. Y'all have a good one.